Hey everybody, it's Nate from Explorers.life, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to build this bus bar system for a camper van electrical install. But first, let's refresh on what a bus bar actually is. A bus bar is simply a way to organize wires so that power can be properly distributed. Think of it as an extension uh, for the end of your battery terminal with the goal of building a cleaner install. But why am I asking you to build your own? I'm well aware that you can buy bus bars on Amazon, and we even had them in our Sprinter that we built out two and a half years ago. We had our negative bus bar here, positive bus bar here, a fuse there, a fuse there, a fuse there, a shunt there. It works and it's operational, it was just messy. This bus bar system I'm going to teach you how to make will require you to crimp fewer lugs on the wires, it can fit into a smaller area, it can make troubleshooting easier, it can increase the system efficiency as there's going to be fewer connection points, it'll give you an easier way to disconnect the system, and it'll look way better on Instagram. And will actually, in the grand scheme of things, will be even cheaper than the way that we did it in our van because it will require you to use fewer lugs and instead of these bus bars, which cost about 40 bucks, we're actually just going to be using copper flat bar that costs closer to the $20 mark for a two watt wire equivalent. Now, last three things before we get started. Number one, there is a blog post that accompanies this video and is a must read as it's got resources on it, like the bus bar template that you'll need for this project. Number two, you will need access to my free solar wiring diagrams. And number three, if you don't want to make this yourself, I'm also selling these as a pre-assembled package. So if you'd rather me make it instead of you making it, that's also an option. Information on all of those resources can be found in the description below. Let's start making. So here is what we are working toward. This is what we'll end up with by the end of the video. So I'm going to disassemble all of this and we'll start from pretty much step one and work back towards this. Now we have it totally disassembled and we are ready to start working. The first thing that we needed to do was we needed to get these three bus bars here and they needed to be cut from this piece of copper bar stock. And here's how we did that. So in the blog post for this video, there is a template that is going to show you the lengths of bar stock that you need and where to cut them. I'm cutting them on a port band saw and I'm just going to cut those to the length specified in the template. After those are cut to the proper lengths, then I'm going to drill out the holes with a drill and the appropriate sized drill bits as also described in the template. So as I was editing this, I noticed that the place that I have got on my parts list for you to buy the copper bar stock, they will actually cut the copper bar stock for you um, for an additional fee. It's a few dollars per cut, but if you don't have a port band saw or you don't want to hack saw through it, uh, that's another option I would highly consider. And that's how we get to this. But kind of talking through the parts that you're going to see here, as well as some of the tools that we're going to be using, it's these three copper bars. All of these are ANL fuse holders, these four things here. Uh, these are the ANL fuse fuses that are specified in this wiring diagram. All of these wiring diagrams, if you haven't found them already, they can be found at explorus.life slash solar wiring diagrams, or there's a link in the description where you can find that. But this, what we're building here, is this right here. So our four fuses, our four ANL fuse holders, our master disconnect switch, this is our shunt, as well as power wires to power the shunt. And that is for the most part it. Oh, actually one more thing. Uh, you're also gonna need these, uh, this bolt assembly that I have in the parts list in the blog post. It's just a simple bolt, a nut, a lock washer, and then two washers. You're gonna need two of those setups. So that is all the, the parts that we need. Uh, the tools that we're gonna be using on this uh, project are going to be a half inch wrench, a 9 16 inch deep well socket, 17 millimeter socket, a half inch socket, a 14 millimeter socket, a ratchet and an extension. And you will need some other basic hand tools like some wire strippers, uh, pliers, that kind of stuff. But ultimately, if you're taking on a camper van electrical build, I will assume that you have some hand tools at your disposal. 
this is going to be the main bulk of what we're going to be using in this particular project. So let's get going. So when you get your a &L fuse holders in the package, all of these will be already on there. Um, but all it is is it's two washers, a lock washer, and then a nut. That setup is how you'll find it whenever it comes out of the box. But I have already taken these apart. You will want to leave the bottom washer on all the A&L fuse holders. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take three of the fuse holders and we are going to line them up so that they fit into this side of this bus bar. We're going to then take our switch and this just comes apart like this. So I've already done this one um, for an example. Here's one, you would find it like this out of the box. Uh, this just comes apart. You just have to be kind of mean with it, just pull on it. Um, you'll need this one to not be there. So you just break it off, just push it. And snaps off just like that. That way you can access both studs on each side of the switch. We need to take the nuts off of the switch, like so. We are going to orient the switch like this. Uh, so off is up top, on is off to the right. Now if you notice on the back of this, it has input and then it says output. That truly doesn't matter. Um, we're actually going to be switching them, but it honestly doesn't matter. So if you notice it, just ignore it. Okay, that is going to go into this hole. I guess in all honesty, we can go ahead and, and just take that off of there for now. But that's going to go in that hole. Tighten this down. And I actually would recommend go ahead and tighten this all the way down like that. Make sure it's nice and straight. Okay, and I'm happy with how straight that is. That's pretty close. The other one is going to be the two-hole bus bar, just like this. Make sure it's nice and straight, and then tighten it down. Now we can put this one here. Okay, that's that. So the next thing that we need to do is on these, these nuts right here, they actually need to come up off of the base of the fuse holder about halfway up the stud. This just makes sure our fuse stays nice and lined up. So you may have to use a wrench to pull these up, but they just need to spin up about halfway up this stud. like. this. Now we can go ahead and run our wires to our loads off of all of these studs here. So this will be the wire that goes to our charge controller. This will be the wire that goes to our alternator. I'm sorry, our inverter charger. This will be the wire that goes to our alternator charge. And lastly, this will be the wire that goes to our 12 volt bus bar and distribution panel. So now those are lined up. Uh, we'll put the bolts on or the nuts on top in just a second. But next, we need to uh, fit the fuses on these. So for the inverter charger, it's calling for a 250 amp fuse. So it's going to sit like that. Uh, we've got a 250 amp fuse for the alternator. We've got a 100 amp fuse for the DC distribution block. And we have an 80 amp fuse for the charge controller. 
And all that is according to the fuse sizes listed on all of these wiring diagrams. Now these wiring diagrams are all kinds of different sizes. Uh, so just browse through and you can see which one you would need for your purpose. And on the parts list below the wiring diagrams, there's a section in there and it's called bus bar. And that's gonna have all of the pieces that's gonna make up this particular piece of the project. So now we can loosely put on all of the bolts for this side. So starting with these washers and these lock washers and these nuts. And if by chance you spun the nut on the bottom of the wire up a little too high, you can simply spin it back down a little bit to give yourself enough room. And now I'm just tightening these up a little more than finger tight, but not all the way. Just so they won't move around. Okay, so these are just finger tight. These are a little more than finger tight. And now something that you would want to think about is if you're building this in place where it's going to be mounted, then you could go ahead and move these wires to the side to use these screw holes to screw it to the wall or the box or whatever it is that you're using. So uh, you pr should probably do that before you tighten all of these all the way down. Okay, so we are going to slide this up and somewhat out of the way for now. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the negative bus bar. And the negative bus bar is going to sit on top underneath this bolt on the shunt. And the shunt is, it actually matters which direction you face it. Uh, on this side, it says battery only. And on this side, it says load and charger. So this side needs to be going towards the battery. And then this side needs to be going towards all of the loads, like the DC fuse block and literally everything that's not the battery. Okay, so this big circle is where it's going to fit onto here. And we're gonna fasten that down in a second. We're actually gonna do the wires on this side. You'll also notice that on the wiring diagram, this bus bar has six slots. This one only has three. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to back on some of these wires. And I just couldn't do that on this wiring diagram. Uh, it was easier just to make it look like this. So you'll see what I'm talking about now. Okay, let's do this. So we're going to take all of our negative wires from our various sources. And we're going to attach them to this bus bar. Now when we're attaching them to the bus bar, these lugs actually need to be back to back. They just fit better like that. So if you try to put them on like this, they're never going to mate together properly. And so they need to be this direction. So we need one of our bolts, nuts, two washers and lock washer assembly. And this is gonna go through one of them, through the bus bar, and then through the other one. We put our washer on it, then our lock washer, then our nut, snug that down. Our next two wires, same thing. Through one, through the bus bar, and through the other lug. Put on that washer, this lock washer, and this nut. I'm gonna tighten that up with a half inch ratchet and a half inch wrench. 
Great, so that is all of these wires. And when you're arranging these wires, um, just, just pay attention to where they kind of go to. Um, if you're setting up everything on the wiring diagram to be laid out in the exact same spots that I have it in the wiring diagram, they just pay attention to where the wires are going and make sure all your runs are nice and neat. And actually on this particular wiring diagram, if I were doing this for real, um, I would be running this, get, this wire that goes over to the uh, DC distribution block. I would make that on the far right side. That way we're not crossing over quite as many wires. But ultimately, just pay attention to that. Make it nice and neat, nice and clean. What we're going to do now is we're going to put this onto here. But first, it would probably be a good idea to actually mount your shunt to the wall where you're going to be mounting this thing. So, Because by the time you put this on there, it blocks access to this screw hole. So you would do that. Now on all the parts lists on my wiring diagrams, they all have lugs with this size of hole. This is a 5 16 inch hole. And sometimes, in the case of this shunt, it actually requires a bigger hole. 5 16 is bigger than uh, what can fit through here. So I actually find it easier to simply drill these out. And it's going to look like that at the at the end of it. Um, if you like, if you would like to get your, you know, the, the, the exact proper size of lugs, like that's totally fine. But in the wiring diagram and the parts list, I have all 5 16 inch lugs. Uh, it's a little cheaper to do it like that because you can buy them in bulk and it's maybe a little less confusing uh, from an inventory standpoint. So it's up to you. Now on this one, we're going to put the bus bar from the, neg the negative bus bar directly on top of the shunt like that. And then we're going to put these two lugs that we've drilled out to be a little bit bigger size. Those are going to go back to back on top of that. Now this bolt, it would have come with a lock washer and a washer on top of it. Since we're doing it like this, we no longer have room for it. So we are going to do this without the lock washer and lock washer. And if you'd like to add a lock washer to it, um, if that's your thing, that's your prerogative, that's totally fine, but you will need a longer bolt. Okay, and I also made sure, I had to loosen this one up uh, because this was not as straight as I wanted it on the bottom, but now it looks pretty good. So that is that. So I just found, I just found that I had a rogue lock washer that was supposed to go here. So. It's always a good idea to pay attention to parts you have laying around if you have extra parts and making sure everything is accounted for. Lock washer, problem fixed. Now we want to bring in power from the negative side of the battery. So we will undo this bolt, put this right up on top, bolt it back down, and we can go ahead and tighten it down as well. So now we have negative coming in from the battery. Now the next thing I would want to do would be to go ahead and prep the wire that is going to power this little chipboard on the side of the shunt. Now if you recall, this, uh, this is to power the Victron BMV 712. And it will tell you how much state of charge you got, how many amps you're pulling in, how many amps you're discharging and all kinds of stuff like that. This is the faceplate, uh, but ultimately it's Bluetooth. Um, so this is pretty cool, but the fact that it's Bluetooth and you can access all that on your phone is even better. But this needs power for that to work. And whenever you get this in your kit, in your Victron BMV 712 kit, it's gonna be this, the shunt, the faceplate, does that accord. Um, and a few other little random items. But ultimately, this wire is this long, and we don't need that. That's, uh, that's too much for, for our purposes. We only need it to be this long. So I've already shortened it down. I just cut it, um, cut it to fit. Um, I did need to make sure that this fuse stayed in line. That's what's inside of there. And to do that, I simply just used a butt splice connector. That was for 22 gauge wire. Uh, it's got heat shrink and it has a little bit of solder inside of it and it's super awesome and it holds really, really well. 
So I've already done that off camera. So this uh, ferrule right here, it simply goes into this connection, which is B1, which is the closest one to the communication port. And it simply sits in there like that. Just give it a little tug, make sure it's nice and tight. And then we're just gonna set it over here because it's going to connect there. So the next thing we need to do is we need to connect battery power to here. Okay, so to connect the battery cable here, um, we're actually going to be lifting it up and putting it underneath this a &L fuse holder, like so. And then we are also going to be putting this ring lug underneath there as well. Now, since this is taking up a lot of space, uh, we're not going to have room for the lock washer on this one. So we're just going the washer and the nut on top of that. And that can be tightened down. So now that that's done and it looks all nice and neat, we're going to make a final go around and make sure everything is nice and tight. Having all of these nice and tight is incredibly important because if they're loose, then you'll have an immense amount of resistance and it could heat up and melt components. So moral of the story, make sure these are tight. And also it would be a great idea to occasionally when you're doing your checks in your camper to go through and just make sure everything is still tight. That's a very, very good idea just in general maintenance. That is actually all there is to this particular part. Um, the only other thing you could do is connect your data cable that goes to the back of your Victron BMV 712. And that's just going to connect right into that port. It's the same as a phone line, just like that. And then that's fully connected. The last thing to do would be to turn this on and you'd have power to all of this stuff. So I'm personally pretty happy with how that system turned out. I think it's a great way to distribute power to the various components in your camper electrical system. Special thanks to the guys at Victron for letting me pick their brains on how to best assemble and organize this bus bar system. Now, if you want another option to achieve pretty much what we've just made, Victron has a product called the Lynx and it's their shunt and bus bar system that's really polished and it looks super nice. It's at a premium price, but it would make for a super clean install nonetheless. If you want me to do a review slash tutorial over that product, I've left a link in the description below. You can kind of check out that product and see what it's about. But ultimately, let me know in the comments uh, because I'm not really sure how interesting that would be to you guys. So if, it, if that is interesting, let me know. Now, I hope that video helped you out. And if you make this and you're on Instagram, please share a picture of your final project and tag me in it as I'd really love to see what you've made. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up and share it with somebody else who could use it. If you want to see more tutorials about building DIY campers, be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.